Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk a little bit about the texture emitter. I'm going to explain what you can achieve with the texture emitter, the different attributes that you can modify, and some cool effects that you can uh, create uh, just using the simple emitter. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to go and add a texture emitter to my uh, scene here. Uh, I'm going to go to my set tab under particle folder under the popcorn effects super tools and included with the plugin. You'll load up your texture emitter right here. Okay, and let's just uh, press the W hotkey to bring it up a little bit and bring it over here right into the middle of our uh, spotlight. Whoops, selected the wrong uh, gizmo there. All right, so now we have this texture emitter and let's press shift S to simulate right off the bat. Okay, so what happens, let's bring it a little bit higher actually. All right, so it's not uh, being obstructed by the ground mesh there. Okay, and you can see that we're shooting off random numbers into the sky. This is your basic texture emitter. Let's go to our popcorn effects tab over here and kind of deconstruct what is happening here. So you'll see that um, we're going to talk about blend modes first, okay? Blend modes, and then we're going to talk about the Sprite Atlas. All right, so blend mode currently is set to additive. And we're currently using the 8x4 Sprite Atlas. Now, when you see this you use 8x4 Sprite Atlas, that corresponds to every item here in the particle resource list that has a 32 on it. You can see 8 times 4 is 32. So you have the additive 32, the blend 32, and the blend unlit 32, and also distortion 32, which we're not going to talk about in this tutorial though. If I decide to take that off, we're going to basically going to be using the additive one, the alpha blend one, and the blend unlit one. Okay, so the one indicates we're only using these uh, one suffixes here, okay? If we don't have the 8x4 spread atlas selected, we're only using the items with the one suffix on them. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use those 8x4 sprite atlases, and let's take a look at the different blend modes. So right now we're currently set to additive. So the additive blend mode basically blends with the background by adding RGB values for overlap pixels of the particle in the background. This kind of results in a brighter or overexposed uh, appearance compared to particles the original color. Uh, it's not affected by the light, color, and strength. So the additive uh, blend mode here is not affected by any other lights in your scene or the colors of lights as well. It'll always be this uh, current blue color we have right here. And you can change the color of that by going into your uh, lifetime section right here and uh, adjusting all these colors. Uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. You can see they're kind of set to blue, between blue and green. They fade out to green there. Okay, but you can adjust those colors and they won't be influenced by the environmental lighting. Okay, so that's the additive mode, uh, basically a little bit overexposed. Uh, you can use it in a lot of different situations. But let's change our blend mode now to alpha blend, okay? And you can see with alpha blend, we're currently using this item right here. So we're using this sprite sheet. We're shooting off a number of different uh, uh, numbers, which we'll talk about in just a moment here. But the alpha blend mode uses the original color's texture. It incorporates the color and the strength of the environmental light as well. Okay, so right now I have a blue spotlight kind of shining on my gizmo here. If I go to my scene tab, you can see my blue spotlight right here. If I turn it off and I just uh, re-simulate, let's actually make it visible so you can see which direction it's pointing directly down at the gizmo there. Now if we shift S to simulate in alpha blend mode, we're not going to have any lighting because basically there's no light on these, uh, on these textures here that are being emitted. So if we want to, you know, get some light on that, we need to turn on our uh, blue light right there. And you can see as they're escaping the spotlight area there, they are turning darker colored back to their regular alpha blend mode. Okay, so alpha blend uses the environmental light. Now there's also alpha blend unlit, which is very similar to the additive mode, all right? And this basically means that the alpha blend unlit, they're self-illuminated. They're not affected by the light color or the light intensity either. Okay, so if we turn off our spotlight and uh, shoot off the alpha blend unlit, there you go. All right, so it's kind of self-illuminating. You can see the uh, the ground kind of shining just like that uh, because we're these items, these texture pieces are self-illuminated. Okay, if we go to the, back to the additive mode and uh, re-simulate, you can see the same thing. Very similar, okay? So those are the modes. Now let's talk about the Sprite Atlas, okay? So you can see right now we have currently used 8x4 Sprite Atlas. Let's simulate that really quick, okay? And you'll see that we're only emitting numbers one through four. If you pay close attention, there's no fives, sixes, sevens, or eights, or nines, or zeros, okay? So if we change that sprite max up to a value of 10, for example, now we're seeing some sevens, we're seeing some eights and nines, 
and so on and so forth. Now the reason for that is because we have this Sprite Atlas. Now I'm going to just go ahead and uh, load that in Photoshop really quickly by launching it. Okay, and let's just add another layer here and uh, create a black background so we can see our uh, our layers a bit more, or our sprites a bit more. So there's four items from top to bottom, okay? Now if I press Control, Shift, and I, that's going to open up my image parameters, uh, image size rather. You can see it's 2048 by 1024. Uh, this is the recommended size for your Sprite Atlas, okay? And there's four evenly distributed numbers from top to bottom, and across there's room for eight. However, we're only using 10 numbers here. And that's why uh, if I go back to my uh, iClone window right here, that's why the Sprite Max is at 10. If I set that even up to like 32, it's not going to make a difference. You can shift S and simulate. You can see now it's actually uh, less, it's more uh, uh, distributed uh, less evenly because we're using less Sprite spaces. So some of them sometimes, because we have Sprite mode selected to random, if we bring that up to 32, sometimes it's just going to emit a blank space, basically, okay? So that's why there's not as many numbers as there was before. That's one way to kind of, uh, you know, dissipate the distribution of your of your uh, textures. If we take it back to 10, then every sprite that is emitted will be hitting one sprite on the sprite atlas there. Okay, so that's your basic, uh, you know, emission of sprites, the basic, basic explanation, explanation for the sprite atlas there. Let's go ahead and uh, load in a different Sprite Atlas this time. So we're going to talk about a different one. I'm going to just make my spotlight invisible there. And let's go back to the Additive 32. And let's double click on the Diffuse channel and load in a custom Sprite uh, sheet that I have prepared here. Or Sprite Atlas, whatever. Okay, so we're going to go actually load this in uh, Photoshop. Open in Photoshop really quick. Let's go to have Photoshop loaded up. Again, the image is the same size. If I control Alt and I, it's 2048 by 1024. Okay, and we have these kind of weird looking uh, blob dudes <laughs> even, evenly distributed throughout our Sprite Atlas. Okay, so if I go back to the uh, iClone window now and I load that up, what's going to happen now is if we shift S to simulate, now we're shooting off all these weird looking random uh, blob dudes. Okay, and uh, you can change currently the Sprite Max is set to 10. Okay, we can change that to 32, so we have more variety. Okay, so there's different ones, and it really depends how many how many you choose. Um, that's the number that are going to be emitted. So right now it's 20, and so on and so forth. In the next example, we'll talk a little bit about sprite mode, the animation sequence. Okay, which is pretty cool. All right, but first let's go ahead and maybe uh, uh, talk a little bit about one little thing that is kind of a lot of people don't know about is the soft distance down here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the uh, gravity a bit more here. Let's just uh, give ourselves some more gravity so we can have these dudes kind of bouncing off the uh, ground here. Let's change our gravity to like neg negative two or something like that. Okay, and we give ourselves some more initial speed. Let's try to shoot off a bit more. There we go. All right, these dudes are popping off everywhere. Now, uh, let's actually go to our lifetime as well here. I'm going to change the lifetime uh, attributes of all my uh, dudes. We're going to make them a bit larger. We'll just go to like uh, 10, even larger, 10, 10, for the width and the height. And I'm going to make the opacity at 1 for the entire time. Okay. And end opacity right there. Okay, maybe let's change our emission rate to something a little bit lower since so there's not so many of these darn guys just popping up everywhere. All right, five, that looks fine. Okay, good enough for me. So uh, one thing to notice here is that when these uh, dudes are, actually let's make the lifetime a little bit longer as well here. Uh, going to our basic attributes and change our lifetime to maybe a, a value of five or something. So they bounce a bit more. Okay, now one thing to notice here is that when these sprites are intersecting the ground, they're actually kind of fading out. They have a nice, nice neat uh, fading effect as they hit the ground. Now that's because we have this soft distance uh, enabled. If we take our soft distance down to zero, notice there's, there's a much sharper uh, blend between the uh, particle, the texture, and the ground. Okay, so there's a very, very sharp blend for every time these guys hit the ground. Right? It doesn't really look as good. So you can actually increase the soft distance, and that'll make it kind of blend the texture into the any element or any prop or, or mesh that it encounters. Okay, so it creates a much nicer uh, faded effect right there. Okay, we're shooting off a bunch of these guys into oblivion. Okay, anyways, 
So that is just, you know, uh, the soft distance. And that's how you can, uh, you know, adjust your sprite sheet uh, and the number of sprites being emitted, the sprite maximum right there. Let's talk now about sprite mode animation sequence. Now for this, I'm going to change the values a little bit more here. Uh, we're going to change the emit rate to a value of 1. And I'm going to change my direction to uh, 0. And just emit position will be at 5 or 50. Maybe 55. Sure. Good enough. All right. And uh, we're going to change all our spread stuff here to 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. Just getting prepared for our animation sequence. All right. And we'll change our lifetime to 1. Okay. So these guys are only showing up for 1 second. And rotation. We don't want any of that stuff. So let's just change it back to 0. For animation sequence, generally you don't want rotation. Um, and our gravity needs to be at uh, 0 here as well. All right. All right, so these guys are just going to kind of show up and fade out. And if we change our lifetime uh, opacity, I believe we have them all at 1. Okay, good enough. Now you can change your emit rate to, uh, you know, a value of 0 0.5. You can see that it'll have a kind of a blank uh, point in between all these sprites here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to just change our sprite sheet to a... Uh, to our organized one, rather, to uh, the sprite mode animation sequence. So if we change, change the animation sequence right now, it's going to cycle through all of these sprites, uh, 20 of the sprites, actually, in one second. If I change that lifetime value to a value of, like, uh, 5, for example, it would go a little bit slower, okay? And you'll see a kind of a bit more of a fade between the sprites. We can change that to a value of, uh, you know, sprite max 32, and it's going to cycle through more of them. If we change that value to something like 8, You'll see this, okay? Let's change our emit rate to uh, something a little bit lower, maybe even 0 0.25. There you go. All right? And maybe change the lifetime to something a little bit uh, lower there as well. Value of 1. Okay. And then we need to change our emit rate back up. Okay, so it'll just kind of cycle through like that and maybe change our emit rate to 1. Okay, so that's, that's basically that. If we change the animation sequence... Every one second, it has to cycle through all 32 of those uh, sprites, or all eight of those sprites in this case. If we change it to 32, it's doing 32 per second. All right, so let's go ahead and press Shift-S to end that simulation, and let's load up the next uh, map here, the next uh, sprite atlas, which is this sprite animation. I'm going to load this in Photoshop here as well. Okay, so here you can see a dude, uh, a sprite animation sequence. Uh, and it goes from top, again, from the top left, down. So this is one, two, three, four. And then it goes to the next column, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, 10, 11, 12. So it'll go from here to there to there and keep on going to the very end. Okay. That's the animation sequence for your sprite atlas. Just keep that in mind. So we're going to go ahead and load that in and shift S to simulate. Let's see. There's our dude kind of showing up like this. Now what I want to do here as well is let's just go ahead and you can see it's perfectly fine the way he's uh, the way he's moving right now. If we change that to uh, alpha blend mode. We're going to be loading those numbers. Additive right here. We're using all 32 sprites and we're facing the camera. Let's go to our uh, lifetime uh, again here. And what I'm going to do with lifetime is we're going to change all my colors to white. Okay. Because we don't want any of these colors to influence our sprite atlas. So notice that when we change them to white, we get the original texture. Even though we have additive selected, we have the original texture there. Okay, so now we have a perfectly aligned, perfectly timed animation sequence. If we change any of these values, uh, like say the emit rate, we change that to uh, 0 0.5, for example, we're going to have a little bit of a uh, delay in between the sprite uh, appearances. Okay, uh, so it's a, it's a fine balance between the emit rate and the lifetime of your particles uh, to find out exactly what you want. If we changed this from animation sequence to random, it's just going to show every one second it's going to show a random sprite. Okay, so you can have that if you want. Uh, if you don't, um, I'd recommend you know change it to animation sequence. All right, so that's really about all there is to it. Uh, that's all I wanted to show you guys. A lot of cool things you can mess around with here by adjusting the number of sprites uh, using the sprite atlas um, and the sprite mode from animation sequence to random. You can be creative with your own examples. But that's about all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. So again, thanks so much for watching, and hopefully you learned a lot. If you have any further questions, you can always check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com.
and I hope to see you in the next video.